Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering the subject of power. Now, in previous videos, we've seen that there are three different power formulae. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to prove that all of those formulae remain absolutely true if we apply them to the same circuit. So we're going to test that theory. We're going to see if each one of those power formulae holds true, no matter which one we use, as long as we put the right numbers in the right places. So you can see on the board here, we've got our circuit that we've started off very simply. We've got a resistor connected to a voltage supply. So we've got 60 ohms connected and we've got 240 volts. Now, if you've been following these videos, you'll know that we need one more thing in order to be able to calculate power with our basic power formula. There's one critical thing missing from this circuit. And that one critical thing is the current. We don't actually know at the moment how much current is flowing into this circuit. So what we'll do is we'll figure that out first. And of course, to do that, we've got voltage, we've got resistance, and we want to find current. So we're gonna go back to our old friend, Ohm's law. So let's put that on the board. We've got the formula I is equal to V divided by R. So there's our Ohm's law formula, I equals V over R. What we're gonna do now is put the numbers in and then we'll figure out what the answer to this is. So we put in for voltage 240 volts, that's what we're applying to the resistor and the resistor has a value of 60 ohms. Now hopefully at this point, we don't need to put this into the calculator to do this one, 240 divided by 60, it's the same as 24 divided by six, so that's gonna give us a current flow of four amperes. So you can see there that the current that's gonna be flowing around this circuit has a value of four amperes. So let's put that onto our circuit, just so we can see that the current flowing through the circuit is four amps like that so we've got four amps flowing around the circuit now we can start to calculate what the power in the circuit is going to be so we'll start off with our basic power formula and our basic power formula if you remember is p is equal to i times v so hopefully we remember that from a previous video p is equal to i times v we can put our numbers in here now in order to get our values out so you can see there we've got the four amps that we just calculated is flowing through the resistor. And then we're gonna times that by the 240 volts that we uh, applied to that resistor. So four times 240 is going to give us a total of 960 watts. So that's the power that that resistor would dissipate in the form of heat, 960 watts. Now that's an interesting value because actually we're very close there to the one kilowatt value that we had of our heater in a previous video where we measured the current and the voltage being applied to that one kilowatt heater. So 60 ohms is roughly the resistance of a one kilowatt heater when it's designed to be connected up to a 230, 240 volt supply. Anyway, the power being dissipated by that resistor is 960 watts. So that's a significant value because that's the number that we should get out from our other power calculations as well. So let's do our other power calculations. I'm gonna change my pen just to uh, keep it looking a little bit different. So with my new pen, we'll now put in the second of the three power formulae. A little bit of a test for you here. Can you remember what it is before I put it on the board? We've got P is equal to, and if you remember back to the video that we shot on this, it was I squared multiplied by R. So P is equal to I squared R. Let's put the numbers in from our uh, circuit that we've got. So we've got four amperes and remember we're squaring that number. Let's not forget to do that. That's very important. And then we're going to times that by the resistor value. So we've got 60 ohms. So notice there that we have not included the voltage in this calculation at all. However, if these three power formulae all hold true, we should get out of this now 960 watts. So let's just put this into an, another step here. So four squared is 16. So we're gonna do 16 times by 60. And if we do 16 times by 60, uh, we could probably do that in our heads, but we'll use the calculator. 16 times 60 is going to give us 960 watts. So if you, uh, if you don't believe me or you can't see that, then please put it into your own calculator to have a look. So we can see there that the second power formula, P equals I squared R, is still holding true for this circuit, even though we haven't included the voltage. 
the reason for that is that actually the voltage is kind of buried inside this formula, but it's sort of hidden at the moment. So if you want to know how Ohm's law is buried in this formula, then please go back and watch the video where I introduced this formula. So now let's tackle our third power formula. So for this one, uh, if you remember, the formula is P is equal to V squared divided by R. So P is equal to V squared over R. So you'll see here, there's no current involved. Although again, the current is buried inside there, but it's hidden away so that we can't see it. And again, if you're not sure how current is buried in here, please go back and watch the video where I explained where this formula comes from. So let's put some numbers in. Our voltage for this circuit is 240, bearing in mind that we're gonna be squaring that. And then we divide that by the resistor value of 60. And just as a little kind of help here, let's do 240 squared, which gives us 57,600. And we'll divide that by 60. And 57,600 divided by 60, hopefully you know where this is going now, is going to give us a value of 960 watts. So we can see there that that power formula still holds true for this circuit. 960 watts. So we've proven by considering just a simple circuit, we just started off with a voltage and a resistance, we've proven that using Ohm's law and any one of the three power formulae, we can actually get to our final power and it will be the same no matter which one of those uh, electrical quantities we decide to use, as long as we get the right number in the right place for the right quantity. So. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.